okay? Police, these are your friends. Protect them this time. Do not murder our civilians. Okay, there you go. There go the civilians running off into La La Land. And here come the police to engage, engage the evil criminals. As you can see, <laughs> the police are <laughs> trying to beat the crap out of them with their uh, batons. It's not going too well. It's actually going pretty well. I guess they got the numbers this time, but baton versus, you know, six inch knife that the criminals are using is not a very good uh, combination. Hello everybody, Yellow Mustang here again with another Roblox scripting tutorial. Today we're going to be making uh, Police AI. Um, right now we have a uh, city built with some figures running around. And then I've just a, added a uh, criminal here that goes around stabbing people. And um, we need to find a way to uh, get rid of the crime in this city because there's too many uh, criminals just going around murdering people. As you can see, the figures are not not very happy about this. And our current police force is just getting demolished by these criminals here. So we're going to have to add some AI logic to this guy to uh, protect this city for us. So let's go ahead and stop that. Let's uh, go ahead and look at our police template that we have made today. So today um, I'm using a uh, R15 model that I've copied pretty much from my own Roblox character and just uh, created this guy from him. So inside the uh, police, we got um, body colors, pants, shirt, you know, police pants, police shirt. Uh, the default Roblox animation script for R15 models. Uh, we got a humanoid, per usual, normal health, all that good stuff. Um, normal humanoid stuff in there. Uh, Johnny Hair, I pulled from the Roblox catalog. And then we got a uh, sound script that I made a couple episodes ago. Um, basically just whenever a humanoid event fires like running jumping died it'll play the corresponding sound so that'll all be good there um all this other stuff here is uh, r15 body parts until we get down to the uh, pistol we have a uh, pistol welded to his uh, hip right now and uh, he's going to use this for ranged engagement with the enemy essentially um i got some some pretty good gun sounds inside the uh, pistol there uh, right now we have it uh, a weld constraint to his humanoid root part uh, we're going to be modifying this weld as the uh, character moves around so we can weld it from his humanoid root part to his hand and you'll see how that works uh, later on so let's move on here uh, we got more r15 default uh, body parts and then we come down to this weird part we got called aim here so this is going to be the pivot point for his right arm when he's aiming at uh, the enemy or whatever with his weapon. So um, let me show you exactly what this is. So let's let's take off his shirt here and then his right upper arm we will make invisible so you can see. So all we have here is essentially just a part. Um, I was using the hinge to get the, the right facement for it, but essentially the front face of this part is down and the top is this side here and right now I have aim just welded to his um, upper torso so <clears throat> we will use this point to um, to have him actually aim the gun so I'll show you how that works later on once we actually start uh, scripting so let's get out of there I will go ahead and set the transparent to aim to one now so it's invisible so you don't got that weird shit you know stick it on his shoulder um that brings us to the uh, baton uh baton's pretty basic right now i just got it welded to his um lower torso i believe um i got some baton sounds in here uh then baton weld constraint yeah i just got it welded to his uh lower torso uh baton mesh all that good stuff and then uh head humanoid root part you guys know all about that head uh, we do have like the sounds and stuff already preloaded. Um, if you pull the uh, template, you're going to have all these sounds and stuff included. So the link for the template for this guy is in the video description as usual. Um, the last thing we got inside this figure here is the uh, right swing uh, animation, which is just going to be him swinging the uh, baton. So um, that should be good. So now that we've covered the uh, template model. Okay, so jumping into our script here. So let's go ahead and type that out. 
All right, so as usual, we are going to start out with our local variables. There's going to be a lot of local variables, so uh, just keep that in mind. We're going to do a lot of typing for local variables right off the bat here, so be ready for that. So we're going to start off my human, little script.parent, wait for child, uh, humanoid. I'm going to do local my root equals script.parent, wait for child, uh, humanoid root part. And then we need our head, so local head equals script.parent, wait for child, head. And um, if you guys don't know, all wait for child does is going to pause the script essentially until uh, head appears in the body. So if this figure loads into a game, it's going to wait for all the body parts to load in essentially before running the script so we don't get any errors. Or anything like that so it's a good way of declaring local variables uh, the safe way essentially so after head we need face equals head wait for child uh, face good and then we'll do local upper torso equals script dot parent wait for child upper torso then lower torso equals script dot parent wait for child lower torso Good. Okay, then we need to um, get our right arm variables in here because we're going to be, you know, using that to aim. So we'll do local right upper arm equals script dot parents. Wait for child upper arm. Yeah, right upper arm. There we go. And then we need um, local uh, right uh, wrist equals. Sorry, right, not right wrist, right uh, shoulder equals right upper arm, wait for child, uh, right shoulder. Right shoulder, if you don't know, is a motor 6D, and it's what allows the arm to swing back and forth. So we're going to be messing with that. Um, next, we need local right shoulder weld equals uh, right upper arm wait for child right shoulder weld okay so I guess I should probably explain that we do have some additional welds created in the arms so uh, right upper arm let me just show you here right upper arm I do have a weld uh, with part zero set to aim already so what we're going to do is essentially switch. Um, we're going to turn on part one to be our right upper arm up there and set part zero to be aim. So that way our arm rotates with that aim block. And we're going to be setting the rotation of the aim block and then just have the rest of the arm rotate with it. It'll make sense later on once I start coding it. I know it's kind of confusing for now, but just bear with me. That's why there are welds in the guy's arms. Okay. So next up is we're going to do his hand. So local right hand equals script dot parent. Wait for child. Uh, right hand. Good. And then we need local right wrist equals right hand. Wait for child. Right wrist. Okay. And that's another motor 60, that right wrist. Um, then local right wrist weld equals uh, right hand wait for child uh, right wrist weld okay good next we will do the uh, local right lower arm equals script dot parent wait for child right lower arm okay and then same thing as usual right uh, elbow equals right lower arm wait for a child right elbow okay that's another motor 6d that we're going to be working with and then the weld so right elbow weld equals right lower arm wait for child right elbow weld okay good now we need to do the gun, so local gun equals script dot parent, wait for child, uh, pistol. 
then uh, gun weld local gun weld equals gun wait for child gun weld okay it's good there and then we'll do the aim so local aimer equals script dot parent wait for child aim okay good uh, then the uh, aim weld so local aimer weld equals aimer wait for child aimer weld okay so that should be good next we will do the uh, baton so local baton equals script dot parent wait for child baton good then baton weld so local baton weld equals script uh, not sorry just do a uh, baton wait for child uh, baton weld I know this is this is like a ridiculous amount of, of variables here but let's let's keep on chugging through so the next thing we're gonna do is the uh, sound sound variables so local equip sound equals gun wait for child <clears throat> equip good local fire sound equals gun wait for child fire then local uh, reload sound equals gun wait for child reload local tick sound equals gun wait for child tick okay and then local on equip sound equals gun wait for child on equip okay there's all the gun sounds there for you let's raise this up a bit all right let's do the uh, baton sounds now so local hit sound equals baton wait for child hit i'm gonna do local uh, swing sound equals baton wait for child swing and then local unsheath sound equals baton wait for child unsheath i have a hard time spelling that but i think i got it tonight uh, then we need to make a clone of this guy for responding purposes. So script.parent uh, clone. We'll just like take a note of what this guy looks like when he's first created so we can replicate him when he dies. Um, next thing we need is um, some local variables, some like booleans and integers. So local gun holstered equals true because he's got the gun put away right now and then local baton holstered equals true because the baton is put away right now local gun cool equals true that's going to be our cooldown variable so the gun is cool right now uh, local baton cool same thing true he can swing the baton if he wants uh, local magazine magazine <clears throat> equals 15 so he's got 15 bullets in his clip and uh, um, local allies here is going to be script.parent.name uh, figure and we will add civilian so this is going to be all the people we don't want him to attack so whatever we have him named uh, we don't want him to attack other people with the same name as us, so it would be police in this case. So police are his allies, uh, figures are his allies, and civilians are his allies. So we will ensure that we don't attack anything with any of these three names. If you want to add additional names to this list, feel free based on uh, what you need for your game. Uh, the last couple variables, thank God, is just the... Um, the animation variables, so I'll just make a note here, animations. And then, so uh, local right swing equals script.parent, wait for child, right swing. That's uh, the swinging baton uh, animation. So right swing animation equals my human load animation. 
right swing. Okay, so that'll load that nice. Then we set the priority as usual. So right swing animation dot priority equals enum dot animation priority dot action. Okay, so that's the uh, highest priority, which will mean it will interrupt any other animations that are going on, which will most likely be his running animations. So we will overwrite that and then have him swing the baton and it will look amazing, trust me. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and start getting our function. And the first function we are going to set up for a, our police guy is the wander function. So function wander. This is just gonna be him walking around randomly if he doesn't have a target. So we'll start off local rand x equals math.random, negative 50, 50, local Rand z equals math.random, negative 50, 50. And then goal equals my root. Uh, we've got to put local in there, man. Local goal equals my root dot position plus vector three dot new uh, rand x uh, zero for the y and rand z. So that will generate us a random position based off of where we are standing uh, within 50 studs of ourselves. So we'll just wander uh, a good distance away. Uh, then we set up our pathfinding. So local path equals game, get service, pathfinding service, create path with the uh, default uh, settings for that. Uh, then we compute the path. So compute async starting position is going to be my root position ending position will be goal okay and then we will <clears throat> go ahead and get the waypoints so local waypoints equals path get waypoints okay next we're gonna check and see if the uh, path is successful or not so if path status equals to enum dot path status dot success then we will go ahead and loop through our waypoints. So we'll do for i uh, waypoint in waypoints do. Okay, so that's gonna be a simple for loop there. Um, in, sorry, not in, in i pairs, there we go. So for i, i is going to be the iteration we're on, waypoint will be the current waypoint we're on. And then we're looping through the waypoints uh, table. So every waypoint we have, we will uh, have our humanoid walk to each one in order. So um, let's go ahead and keep going here. So we will check if we need to jump. So if waypoint dot action equals to enum dot um, waypoint action dot jump, then my human dot jump equals true. So if we need to jump, then jump. Next, we will do my human move to uh, waypoint dot position. Okay, so that's good there. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and have the script pause. Uh, until he's finished moving to the waypoint. So we'll do local move success equals my human dot move to finished wait. So that will pause the script until my human finishes walking to the uh, current waypoint. And it will return if it finishes successfully or not. So we will check if it doesn't finish successfully. So we'll do if not move success, then break. So if we fail to walk to the waypoint that we are trying to get to, then we're going to assume we're stuck and we're going to break out of this, this path here and try something else. Okay. Um, and then down here, if the, um, if the path is unsuccessful, we will just wait two seconds and then try again. Okay. Um, the next function we will set up is the uh, get unstuck function. So function get unstuck 
good. And then we will do my human move to actually just, uh, yeah, just move. Yeah, just move math.random negative one, one, zero math.random negative one, one. Okay, so that's going to have our humanoid move in a random direction based off of what this returns. And with the uh, move uh, command, move function to the humanoid, it will keep moving in that direction until interrupted, until the humanoid is told to move somewhere else. So it'll just keep walking in a straight line in whatever direction this randomly tells it to go. So we will pause our script here for 0 0.3 seconds while we attempt to uh, get unstuck there. Uh, the next function we will create is the function chase and then target. So then we'll just do my human move to target dot position. Okay, simple enough. That's all we need there. Um, next thing we are going to set up is a distance checker essentially. So we'll do find dist from torso target. So we're going to just return uh, a value here. So we'll do my root dot position minus. Yeah, actually. <laughs>